Okay, so I'm now going to look at uh, solving some differential equations uh, using a variety of techniques. So we're going to use the integrating factor, uh, we're going to separate variables, and we're also going to use substitution. Um, first off, we're going to look at one with, uh, with uh, just uh, basically separating and rearranging. So we've got dy by dx equals y squared over 1 plus x, and we've got some initial conditions as well. The first part says solve the differential equation. Okay, well, if I notice here, um, it's only six marks for both parts of the question. That's a bit of a clue that it shouldn't be too difficult. And then I also should notice that I can basically just uh, treat this as a fraction and, in effect, kind of cross-multiply and uh, rearrange. Um, and if I do that, I get this thing here. So 1 over y squared dy is equal to 1 over x dx. Okay, and I've got some function of y dy and some function of x dx. So actually all I need to do now is just integrate both sides. Um, so there we go, I'll just rewrite it with a minus 2 just so it's less, less likely to make a mistake and equally rewrite it like that. Uh, if I integrate both sides, I should get minus y to the minus 1 is equal to and then ln 1 plus x and then plus c. Uh, I only need to put a plus c on one of the sides. I don't need to worry about putting it on both sides. Um, in effect, if you put a uh, constant on both sides, you merge it into kind of one new constant anyway, so we can just leave it like that. So this is my equation, and then all I need to do is just rearrange this equation because I want my answer as y equals. Um, well, actually, before I do that, I'll, I'll actually find this initial condition for c. So I know that when y is 1, uh, x is 0, so I can put y equals 1 in here, which gives me that, and I put x equals 0. And if I solve that, therefore c must be equal to negative 1. Okay, so I can put that c equals negative 1 into my equation. So minus y to the minus 1 is equal to ln 1 plus x and then take away 1. And okay, so now I've got the value of c, I'll rearrange it. So just uh, basically times by minus 1 to the right hand side and then uh, just rearrange so you get y equals. So y equals to 1 over 1 minus ln bracket 1 plus x. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part says find the value of a for which y tends to infinity as x approaches a. Um, so that's my initial function. Uh, and then I basically just need to think about what happens. Well, y is going to approach infinity when this denominator is going to get closer and closer to 0 because I'm going to get 1 divided by an ever smaller number is going to get ever larger. Okay, so basically I want 1 take away ln 1 plus x tending towards 0. And well, what that means is that basically ln 1 plus x must be approaching 1 because, again, 1 take away some number very close to 1, it's going to get very close to 0. So I've got ln 1 plus x approaches 1. And then I can effectively solve this, even though it's not an equal sign here. Um, I can I can basically just basically e both sides and then take away one, so I get x approaches e minus one. Okay, so that's not e to the power of minus one. That's that's e to the power of one, as it were. Take away one. So when x approaches this value, then we get closer and closer to infinity uh, on the y value. And just to, to finalise it, 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 the the way that it asked the question was kind of x approaches what number? Well, x approaches this number, and they label that particular number as a. So my final answer would be a is equal to e take away 1. Okay, that was the first question. Um, let me look at one more question. This is quite an interesting question because we can actually solve it in three different ways, and we, we actually try and do all three different ways in this question. So first off, we separate the variables. So it's very similar to that last question, really. So I just noticed that I can rewrite the equation like this. So bring the y down, bring the dx up there, just cross multiply. Um, and then I just integrate this function. Well, that's going to be, so y to the minus 1 integrates to ln y. That integrates to ln x. Again, I remember I put a plus c. Uh, I can just put it on one side. Um, it doesn't matter that I've only got the 1. Uh, and then, same as last time, I, I kind of I basically e both sides. So e and ln kind of... Uh, inverse functions, so I get this thing here, so y is equal to e ln x plus c. And then if I want to split that up, just using the laws of uh, indices, so 
ln e ln x plus c is the same as e ln x times by e to the power c. So I get this function here. And then I can just simplify, well, e and ln, obviously inverse, so I just end up with the x. And then e to the c, well, remember, e is just a number, c is just a number, so I just relabel that and call it k. So I've got a new constant. So y is equal to x times by some constant. Okay, and that can be my final answer. Um, obviously, I don't have an initial boundary conditions, so I'm not actually able to, to work out what this, this constant is here. So that was separating the variables. Uh, next one, I'm going to use uh, homogeneous substitution, y equals vx. Well, first off, I need to check that it is homogeneous. Well, it's told me in this particular question, but they don't always do. It's homogeneous if um, the differential equation can be written as a function in terms of y over x. In this case, it is just y over x, so that's very simple. So it is a homogeneous equation. Um, and then they've, they've given me the substitution, so the y equals vx. All I need to remember now is if I differentiate this function, I'm going to use the product rule. So I'm taking v as a variable, not as a constant. So v is a variable, x is also a variable. So dy by dx is dv by dx times x plus v. So you're using the product rule there. So differentiate v, keep x the same, uh, keep v the same, differentiate x. Okay, so I get this thing here. It's also worth just rearranging this, so y equals vx, therefore y over x is equal to v. Okay, so I end up with those, those two uh, equations there. Once I've got that, I just simply substitute this information uh, into my equation. So I've got um, dy by dx is now given by this thing here, dv by dx times x plus v, and that is equal to y over x, which is v. So there we go. Um, now this particular one is is pretty straightforward after that because the v's just cancel out. So I end up with dv uh, by dx d, uh, times by x is equal to zero. Okay, so there's not that much more to do on this one. Um, and I just flip back. They've told me that x is greater than zero. So here we go, x is greater than zero. Therefore, uh, the only thing that can make this equation zero must be dv by dx being equal to zero. So there we go, dv by dx must be equal to zero. And then I just have to really think about, I just think about what will actually give me this answer. Well, in this case here, the answer will be v equals to k. So I mean, I guess, kind of think about it like, well, if I, if I separate the variables, in effect, I'm going to get um, kind of nothing here. If I'm integrating 0, I'm just going to get a constant. And obviously, if I integrate dv, I'm going to get v. Um, so v is equal to k. v is equal to some number. If you're not entirely sure on that, just see what happens if you differentiate with respect to x. Well, this is going to become dv by dx, and k will just disappear because it's only a, a constant at the moment. So I get v is equal to k. And then all I need to do is remember that v was actually y over x. Therefore, y over x is equal to k. And then rearrange it so y is equal to k times x. Exactly the same as before. Okay, and then the very last one, we're going to try using an integrating factor. Get a few extra marks for this one. It's normally a little bit more difficult. Um, here's, I, I would always write down this information at the start of any of these questions just to check you understand it's in the right form. So I want dy by dx plus some function of x times y equal to some function of x. And my integrating factor is going to be e to the power p uh, integral of px. And this is the final form that I'm going to get it in. Okay, So I'll make a note of those three things. Um, so this equation here tells me immediately I need to rearrange my initial equation. So it looks like this. So dy by dx take away y over x is equal to 0. I think I can then see that the px, the the number that I'm, or the function that I'm times in y by is going to be minus 1 over x, and qx is just going to be equal to 0. Okay, so again, label what p and q are to make it easier for yourself. And then the integrating factor is going to be e to the minus, and then integrate uh, 1 over x. I've just taken the minus outside. Um, 1 over x goes to ln x, um, so I get 
e to the minus ln x. Can bring this minus back here, so that's going to be ln x to the minus 1. And then we've got an e and a ln, so they're uh, inverse functions, so I get x to the minus 1. Okay, so very, very often I end up with some kind of ln that then disappears. So there we go, this is my integrating factor. I now want to show that I understand this idea. So it, sometimes you do need to show this extra step for your mark. So I actually multiply by the integrating factor. So just multiply my initial equation. Well, I'd rearrange it like this, my, my equation by the integrating factor. So I get this function here dy by dx, x minus 1, minus y over x squared, equal to 0. Um, that is the same as this particular function here. Um, again, it's probably not essential to write this down, but if you can manage it, it's, it's, always, it's always good. Um, because when I differentiate this function using the, the product rule, I do in fact get this function here. Okay. But if you can't manage that, uh, probably not worry don't need to worry too much um, because I could have just gone straight to this function here. So basically, as long as you remember this, I said uh, y is equal to 1 over the integrating factor and then times by the integral of ix qx. Okay, so I can put my, my values straight in, um, straight in here. Well, 1 over the integrating factor, the integrating factor is x to the minus 1. The integral of the integrating factor times by qx, well, qx is 0, so this integral, I'm just integrating 0, will that just integrate to give me a constant? So there we go again, y equals 1 over x to the minus 1 times by some constant, which, as you might expect, gives me the same answer, so y is equal to kx. Okay, so for this particular question, I think as long as you write down this step here, and then you remember what the final version looks like and you can jump straight to this version here and then you get this answer. Okay, so there we go, three different ways of solving uh, the same differential equation.